All right, guys, I'm back. And today we're going to answer the question, what do electrolytes do? Now, electrolytes are electrically charged minerals that allow things to move in the body. They allow the muscles to contract and relax. They allow the nervous system to communicate. And they have many, many functions. If you can recall back to chemistry, where you saw that little plus or minus sign on the right upper corner of an element, like calcium is a plus two, chloride is a negative one, potassium is a plus one, sodium is a negative one. Electrolytes are basically charged minerals that have various functions. All right, let's start with sodium. Uh, sodium is considered this bad mineral, but it's actually not. It has a purpose. It helps you maintain fluid volume uh, outside the cell within your blood. Most of the sodium is not inside the cell, it's outside the cell. So the sodium helps hold fluid in the body. And this is one reason why um, if you drink way too much water without sodium, you're going to dilute sodium and you're going to create a condition called hyponatremia. It's very, very dangerous. So sodium has a very, very important role in many different functions. And sodium uh, excites nerves and muscles. So if you're deficient in sodium, you're going to find you're going to have weakness within your muscles. Uh, you might have issues with the nervous system as well. Insulin sensitivity. So sodium helps insulin work better and it can improve insulin resistance, which is probably one of the biggest root causes to the majority of health problems. Okay, next one. This is interesting. It protects your heart. Now you would think that sodium worsens the heart, but if you're deficient, you're going to have problems with the heart. Now I will say that most people are not deficient in sodium. They have too much. So the ratio of sodium potassium is out of balance. But the point is that sodium does protect the heart in the right amount. Okay, hydration. Uh, and also it helps keep LDL, which is the so-called bad cholesterol, which is really not, but keeps LDL in check. All right, potassium. What does potassium do? It maintains intracellular volume. So most of the potassium is inside the cell, not outside the cell. So if you have enough uh, potassium inside the cell, you'll have the volume that you need and sodium and potassium work together as the sodium potassium pump, which generates a lot of electrical energy for the nerve and the muscle, and also to allow things to go in and out of the cell through the cell membrane. And they need to be in the right ratios or you're gonna have a big problem. The average person is very heavy in sodium, very low in potassium, and that creates big problems. All right, next one is antihypertensive effects. So it helps you lower blood pressure, uh, stroke prevention, bone health, muscle synthesis. So if you're trying to get more muscle mass, it's not just about eating protein, you need potassium. Also, potassium is involved in uh, making hydrochloric acid. So if you're having uh, digestive problems, you may need more potassium. Uh, cell energy, we mentioned that. Cell pump, I mentioned that. Kidney stone prevention, interesting. All right, kidney protection. Now, sometimes you'll read that potassium is bad for the kidney. Only if you're like a stage five, you're in kidney dialysis, uh, where the body can't get rid of potassium. But our body has all these mechanisms to get rid of excess potassium, unless the kidney is very, very, very damaged. But we need potassium to protect the kidney. All right, next one, antiarrhythmic. So if you don't have enough potassium, the rhythm of the heart can go off. You might have palpitations. It might be so severe that you have atrial fibrillation. Insulin sensitivity. So you can see sodium and potassium actually help make insulin sensitive. So you need both of those minerals to help with insulin resistance. And arthritis, especially rheumatoid arthritis. But if you have rheumatoid arthritis, I would recommend something like 6,000 milligrams and you should see a lot of benefit. All right, magnesium, energy production. Uh, the mitochondria, which is the energy factory, needs magnesium to produce energy. Also, magnesium is involved in over 300 enzymes. And I'm not just talking about digestive enzymes. I'm talking about cellular enzymes that build things in the body, like proteins, things like that. Uh, bone support, cardiovascular function, vasodilation. And of course, that's going to bring the blood pressure down. Opening up the coronary artery, which is the main uh, artery to the heart muscle. Calcium balance. So you need magnesium with calcium. They work together. Uh, just as potassium and sodium work together. It helps absorb vitamin D and vitamin B1. All right, the last one is calcium. Helps you lower blood pressure, lowers cholesterol, decrease risk of cancer, muscle contraction, 
This is muscle relaxation, so is this. It's a bone support, blood clotting, cell signaling. The majority of the population has a subclinical potassium deficiency and a magnesium deficiency. Usually people are heavy on the sodium and the calcium, but very low on these two minerals. And you may not notice any big things other than some fatigue and maybe some heart palpitations, but over time, they can definitely uh, sh uh, become magnified. All right, guys, now you know what electrolytes do. And check out some additional videos I have on this board relating to electrolytes.